Women's economic empowerment is critical. So it's not only for the benefit of nations and their prosperity, their growth and well-being, but also for individual success and independence of women. We know that economic growth or economic independence is a key uh, to women and their families achieving success uh, and independence in life. Well, in Australia, we see women as equal to men and we have that same philosophy for our region. So a lot of my work is promoting gender equality and women's empowerment and that of girls as well. But in order to achieve that we need to focus on three key areas. We want to promote women's leadership, we want to ensure that women have economic empowerment mm -hmm. and we also need to remove barriers to women's success and achievement, most notably reduce or eliminate violence against women and girls. So when you ask about women's role in society, well, of course, we want women to be productive contributors to their society, uh, as well as uh, being able to look after their families and have the choice to have or raise a family. But you can't do that without economic empowerment and removing some of the social uh, structures and barriers that uh, impede women's success and participation. <laughs> Look, there are many barriers and I think they vary from country to country. We know that no one country in the world, no one economy, has got gender equality right yet. In my country, and a lot of these issues are applicable to a lot of the APEC economies here, things like gender pay gap, uh, low workforce participation, particularly full-time engagement in the workforce. We know that the issue of women's participation in leadership positions, so that might be business and industry, or it might be political participation, you know, they are very uh, much smaller, much uh, decreased in comparison to men's uh, engagement in those areas. And yes, there's a critical area of violence against women, and that is a global problem. In my country, it's a particular problem. I think it's a national emergency. We know that every week a woman is killed at the hands of a partner or former partner. So these issues do impede women's, not only their economic success and opportunities, but more generally, um, we can't have women in communities held back by not only violence, but the fear of violence. Well, APEC is critical, the Women and the Economy Forum recognises that the economy is quite holistic, it's very broad ranging and you can't have women's successful economic participation and engagement unless you deal with some of these other social uh, and other barriers to women's success, which is why I was here to talk about gender-based violence, in particular the costs of gender-based violence in the context of economic development. We can't have growth, we can't have prosperous nations, we can't have the well-being of communities, including women and children, unless we get rid of, we eliminate the scourge of violence against women. So those barriers need to be removed, and I think that's been a critical part of the APEC economies discussion this time. I think the pillars that have been identified by the Women in the Economy Forum mm -hmm. are absolutely wonderful, including issues like uh, women's uh, health and well-being, uh, including issues like women's leadership. All of these areas are absolutely important if we're to have prosperous nations and women who have choice and independence and freedom. Mm -hmm.